What's up everyone, Sixpity here, and the day many of you have been waiting for is finally here. I'm going to provide a full ultimate wind guide today and tutorial so that you all know how the wind works in PJ Tour 2K23 and also so you have some numbers so that you can improve your wind skills. So keep in mind, this is an in-depth guide. So if you are a play by fill player, and you just want to play the wind by Phil, uh, this might not be the video for you. Uh, it may still help you if you play by Phil because you're gonna understand the wind a little bit more and you're gonna get that information in your brain and you can use it and apply it. But this is more for those that really wanna know what is the wind effect for each different wind type it, as regards to distance and in regards to aiming with pitch shots, normal full shots, splash shots, flop shots with different club types. It will all be in this video. I have simplified it this year. I've simplified my data to make it a little bit easier for you all to understand. And I've really spent a lot of time on this. So if you all get some enjoyment and find this helpful, drop a like. It really is appreciated and really helps the channel. And subscribe and stay tuned for plenty more PGA Tour 2K23 content, including a full tutorial playlist. I've already made like 15 tutorials already posted at this point in time. You can check out the full playlist in the description. But today, let's dive in to the wind, everybody. So I'm gonna separate this into early on, talking about the data showing you all the data. I will be posting all of this on my website. Website link will be in the description. I will talk about the wind distance effect, the wind aim effect, and then towards the end, I'm gonna provide a easy wind guide for you for those that just wanna use one number for every single shot in the game. And I'm gonna provide bonus tips at the end talking about how shot shaping, how different fast and slow tempos affect the wind. It's all gonna be in this video. So stay tuned, be ready. But let's go ahead and get on with this. I did do a PowerPoint presentation again, just like last year, everybody's favorite last year. So here we go. As we get into the wind data, what's important to note everybody is that this wind data was collected with the default golf balls, no shot shaping, hitting a perfect tempo every time, a straight swing plane, and either 100% power, but I also tested partial power golf shots as well, so less than 100. So overpowered shots, fast tempos, slow tempos, or missed swing plane golf shots of all types will all change the wind effect with regards to distance and or aim. So, I will provide more information about how the wind effect changes with the different elements, such as shot shaping, fast slows, and overpowers, in the bonus tips of this video. So stay tuned for that. And keep in mind, this wind data is based in miles per hour, not kilometers per hour. I didn't do any ca calculations. You know, I, I, I don't use kilometers per hour ever. I know a lot of people do. Uh, but this is for MPH. So I, I have to point that out. I forgot to point that out last year and I got a lot of questions on that. So let's move on here. I put this slide in here always. I highly recommend you all screenshot this. And the reason is, if you're playing with on TGC Tours, the competitive scene in this game, and you're playing on the Pro Tours, you're not going to have the number. The number on screen here it's not gonna be there on the Pro Tours and TGC Tours. You're just gonna have the circle and the gray meter. So based on how full the circle is with gray, based on how high the gray gets in the circle, the higher it gets, the higher the number. So I put this in reference for you all so you all can have this with you when you're playing your TGC Tours rounds on the Pro Tours. And you can be like, okay, if this is a three mile an hour, if, if, the, if the gray is barely filled, I know what it is. And these are the different wind types. We have a straight side wind. We have a, a cross tail wind, a cross head wind, right here in the middle where my pointer is. We have a straight head wind, and we have a straight tail wind. That is the terminology I'm using for this video as we get into the actual data though. So I know this is what a lot of you all wanted to see, right? I simplified it this year took a lot of averages, right? My goal this year was to simplify the system because what I when I play this game, 
this seer, if you've watched all my tutorial videos, I play with a combination of numbers and a lot of fill. The eye test is still really important because keep in mind, these are just averages across all the wind speeds. I average it all out from low, medium, high, very high. And actually got better numbers this year than last year. More accurate numbers. But keep in mind, these are averages. Many people last year would come in, they would leave a comment, they'd be like, well, Ryan, it wasn't exact. And I'm like, yeah, you got it. That's right. <laughs> hey, hey, good job. It's not. These are averages. You're never going to be exactly right, whether it's real golf, virtual golf. Uh, you can't get them down to the exact number. There's a lot of varieties in this game. The golf balls with different flights change the data. So this is default golf balls, and it's actually pretty similar across the archetypes as well. So wind plays the same across the archetypes. I use the rhythm archetype but the wind plays the same. But what's important to note, these are averages. They're, they're very accurate within, one, d depending on the wind category, can be within a yard, sometimes within one to five. You know, it depends on the wind. But headwind top left, cross headwind top right, tailwind bottom left, cross tailwind bottom right. So these are in average percent multipliers. I will have examples in this video how to actually, what this number means. So basically, you think of that miles per hour wind number as a yards ratio. You're going to multiply the wind speed by the multiplier shown on screen, and that gives you your wind distance effect. This sheet right here is specifically concentrated on the wind distance effect. How much does it decrease the yardage on headwinds? How much does it increase the yardage on tailwinds. I repeat, headwinds, it's going to decrease the club carry distance. Tailwinds are going to increase the club carry distance. If you're a golfer out there, you already know this. So, for example, we will do actual examples later, but look at the top left. We have a 13 mile an hour headwind in this picture here. So I use a calculator. You don't have to use a calculator, especially if you're using the one multiplier for the cross headwinds, which is easy. Any of the ones are just easy. But 1.25, all you would do is, you don't have to use a calculator, do it in your head. It's 125% of 13 miles an hour. So 1.25 times 13 gives us 16.25. That means the wind is gonna affect a driver wood hybrid or iron around 16 yards approximately. That is the calculation. So then you would add 16 yards to your landing zone or wherever you wanna land the ball in your calculations. That is how you do it. Headwinds play very similar between woods, hybrid, irons, and wedges. I just basically for headwinds, I use a 1.25. Now, cross headwinds, drivers, woods, hybrids play around a one. It's easy, right? The number shown is how many yards it's gonna take off the shot on a cross headwind. Wedges plays around 0.9. As we go to the tailwind, driver, woods, hybrids, and irons, one multiplier, wedges, 0.9 so if you remember headwind as 1.25 and if you just remember one for all of the other ones even if you put one on the wedges on a cross headwind or tailwind that's close enough to, to 0.9 you're going to be close so like you can keep this simple and just remember the 1.25 and one you're good to go now for cross tailwinds the interesting thing is when you get to the wedges the average is a lot lower Cross tailwinds don't add as much to the distance uh, than, than you would expect based on the cross headwind values. So what I put at the bottom, the reason there's a star next to cross headwind and cross tailwind, that is because there's different angles of crosswind. And I will talk about this in the next slide. But you see, the so I put these reference for you on here, the actual miles per hour and wind direction. Whichever way the arrow's pointing is the direction that the wind is blowing, right? So you see how the, this is straight diagonal, top left, that's a cross tailwind. This is straight diagonal, bottom left, that's a cross headwind. It could be bottom right, but there's different degrees, tons, and they all affect the ball differently. So that is why the number here is 
different. The number here is different and you're not going to be as specific on cross headwinds. You're just not. It's impossible. There's too many degrees to test. There's too many degrees. But what I did, I used a lot of different shots from different angles and kind of I tried to narrow that one as close as I could get it for you all. all right, so now let's talk about the variability that comes with cross headwinds. And the reason that variability is there for both wind distance effect and aim effect is because of the different angles of the wind. So you can have a, so if we take a look to the, the screen here, you can see the arrows. This arrow to the right, the reference is a straight cross diagonal wind, right? A cross headwind right there, straight blowing right to left in the, in the golfer's face, right? That's the reference. This These two right here, are the reference points right now the ones next to it are different examples so basically the more vertical towards a straight head or tailwind the greater the wind distance effect will be on the club carry distance so you're going to increase you're going to increase the multiplier for more vertical cross headwinds so look at the reference one the picture on the middle right and picture on the middle left See how this arrow on the left is pointing more almost straight down. It's not completely straight down. That would be a straight headwind. So instead of using that 1.0 multiplier on the previous page for this cross headwind, you would use a higher one. So you would either just do the calculation and then in your eye test at the end, be like, okay, I need to adjust for this and add more because it, it's the angle's not fully a straight cross sidewind, right? So that, that is the terminology that I use, and that's the reason there's the greater variability for that. And keep in mind, the eye test is so important after you use the math and set up your shot because the wind moves. It may move from a straight cross headwind to a more vertical cross headwind. Now, in the opposite example, if it's more horizontal towards a straight side wind, straight side wind would be, in this example would be straight right to left, arrow pointing straight to the left, the lesser the wind distance effect will be on the club carry. So you're going to decrease the multiplier for more horizontal crosswinds. So it's not, it's still going to have a little bit of effect. So this can range to even below 0.9. It could be 0 0.8, 0 0.75, 0 0.6. It depends on the angle. If it's a straight side wind, it's not going to take off any distance, right? So that is what I mean by the variability. The same thing when we go in talking about aim, wind aim effect in this video, it's going to be, I'm going to talk about the same variability. It's just a different way to look at it. So moving on here, some important notes with distance effect. I know some of you are like, there's no way it works the same in every wind speed. That is true. So higher winds do have a greater effect on the average multiplier shown on that previous screen. So my data tables that I showed, these data tables are pretty accurate for low, medium, and, but once you get to 18 or above, the number, it's actually a greater effect. So in those examples, you can either compensate by you knowing me telling you right now, you need to, it's gonna either add more yards or take off more yards. So you can either increase your multiplier to 1.5 and use that, or you can just uh, add a few shot, add a few yards, add five to 10 yards to the, the shot. So now for low wind speeds, the wind distance is just a little bit less. So you could get away with like one mile per hour to like five to six. You could probably get away with the one, one to one ratio, one mile per hour to one yard effect with each of your calculations. But honestly, I think it's best to use what's in the chart or do an easy, simple method by remembering the number 1.25. If you remember anything from this video, anything at all, if you've already fell asleep, 1.25, trust me, here we go. So now for wind aim, I know it's a busy slide. I put this text for it because I want you all to have this information when you're playing the game or when you're learning the game. So wind aim multipliers. So whether you see the top right reference, whether it's a straight side wind, arrow pointing straight to the left, a cross tailwind, arrow pointing up and to the left or up and to the right, or whether it's a cross headwind, arrow pointing bottom, so down and left or down and right. So you're gonna multiply the numbers the same way that you did with distance to get the wind aim effect in yards. So my calculations for, for all the clubs is the same. 
For straight side winds, 1.25. For cross head winds, cross tail winds, I use the 1.0 multiplier. There's a lot of variability here. Just like we talked about with distance, the same thing comes into play here. That's the reason I had the stars there. But 1.0, even if you use 1.25, you can use the eye test to be like, okay, it's a cross headwind. I need to take a little bit more off of what I predicted for this golf shot. Do not forget about the eye test. I am telling you all, use fill. Don't only use the numbers. Don't do like I did last year. I use the numbers. It's not, you need to use both. Or you can go by all fill if you want. Nothing wrong with that. So now, important note is use the grids for easy aim. So the grid, a lot of people think the grids are in yards. The grids are not. The grids are actually meters. So one grid is equal to 1.094 yards. So basically my data is in yards, all of it. So you need to know that when you use grids, the number multiplier is gonna be a little bit off anyways if you don't do a correction at the end. Because if you aim 10 grids or more, you, you need to make, it, it's gonna be more. So if I have a 10 miles per hour wind, I multiply one, we have a cross headwind at 10 miles an hour. It's a 10 yard effect, 10 yard. If I move 10 grid lines over, that's 10 meters. I'm gonna be way too, I'm gonna be too far. I'm gonna miss it a little bit, right? So you're gonna be, you know, it's averages, so you're not gonna be exact every single time anyways, but you're gonna be closer if you correct. So if you move four to eight grids, take off about a half grid line at the end to correct. Every time you move nine or more grids, you wanna take off one to 1.5 grid lines at the end to correct. Now, if you're up into the 25 miles per hour winds, if when you go, if you're at 25 times a 1.25 multiplier, you, you wanna make sure you take off about two to three at the end, right? So it depends on the calculation, but simple, that is the way you, you do it. So basically take the wind number showed on screen, approximate value if you don't have the numbers turned on if you're on the pro tours multiply that by the multiplier and that is how many yards you need to aim to the right or left use the grids now keep in mind sometimes you have to visualize the grids because the grids are only on the green right a lot of times you're aiming slightly off the green so just visualize the, visualize the grids visualize the grids one quick flick of the stick when you're zoomed in on the scout cam or even not zoomed in is about the same thing as one grid so you can do quick flicks of the stick which is what i did last year but i wanted to simplify it for you all this year with grids i think it's an easier way to do it and honestly i think it's way more accurate my side win data has been so much more accurate doing this method because you can replicate it each and every time so now, again, crosswinds are variable. So if you have a more vertical vertical towards a straight head or tailwind, the lower the wind aim effect will be. So the greater the effect will be on distance, like we talked about earlier, but the less you have to compensate for the aim. So you're basically gonna decrease the multiplier. So aim a few yards less, right, than you previously had calculated. Now for more horizontal towards a straight side wind, so it's not a straight side wind that would be blowing straight to the left it is more horizontal but still a cross wind it will have a greater effect on the wind name than the multiplier i showed you in the previous slide the one or 1.25 it would be one for cross headwind right so one for cross headwind so you're going to increase use 1.25 that's what i said that's why I said 1.25, remember that number? You're gonna play the all wind speeds good. Every single one of the game, you remember 1.25? Don't wanna remember anything else? Trust me. Here we go. Important rule, one of the probably most important slides of this entire video is if you don't wanna get bogged down by all the numbers and you wanna be pretty close, on every single shot, every single win in the game, Use, just remember 1.25. If you can remember 1.25 for all your wins calculations on a base value, and then you use your eye test and use the knowledge you've gained from this video, you can make your fill adjustments throughout. For example, tell wins from the previous slides, what you've learned is they've affect less than 1.25 multiplier. Crosswinds affect less than 1.25. Wedges affect less than 1.25. Very high wind speeds affect more than 1.25. These are general rules. Do they affect a lot less or a lot more? No, 
Now, very high winds, yeah, you want to make sure you use a little one. But even if you use 1.25 and the wind speed is affecting 1.5, you're still going to be pretty close, right? So you're always going to be pretty close with 1.25 for all the, all the clubs adjusting for wedges, very high wind speeds. 1.25 may be your number. Uh, you know, in high winds, just change it. Change it to 1.4, right? 1.4, but 1.25 as a general rule, trust me, it is a great number to remember. You're not gonna be completely accurate. You're gonna be way more accurate using the other numbers, but a lot of people don't wanna do that, right? So there's the simple way. Now, many of you are wondering, what about pitch shots, right? I don't hit a lot of pitch shots, but you, are, you do actually have to hit a lot of pitch shots in this year's game. The multiplier for wedges is 0.5, for driver woods, hybrid, and irons is 0.75. So easy calculation. Now flop splash shots, they're barely affected by the wind. Like a one to three yard effect in medium to high wind conditions, if any at all. Now wind does not affect chip shots. It's very important to know wind does not affect aim or distance of chip shots. Uh, I've received that question last year and in test it in this game, it does not. So there we go. We wrap up the presentation here, and I know it was a lot of information to cover, right? But a lot of good stuff. I love going through and doing this. I told myself I wasn't going to do it this year, right? <laughs> I told myself I wasn't going to do it, and then instead, I went out and I simplified it. I simplified it so that you all have a base to use from, but also a more accurate numbers as far as... The other, you basically had to use the data sheets in the last one. And I will say the wind is a little more accurate this year. Now, when you start using the different golf balls, it's different. But uh, one of the, a few of the things I wanted to show you all is the crosswind effect. So as we get out to my practice facility I made, I just went out and I this is how I tested a lot of the wind. And if we look at a straight cross headwind, so we are at a straight diagonal here, right to left. This would be what I consider a straight, a, a straight cross headwind. So an easy way to see the wind effect, just for demonstration purposes, if you go to settings, you go to difficulty, you turn on the wind vision, it's gonna show you the wind's distance and aim effect. So what I'm worried about now is the distance. This club is supposed to carry 178. It's carrying in this wind, high wind setting of 164 but watch what happens what i want to demonstrate here is what happens is we change this angle you can't see the wind meter once you turn on pro vision you no longer see the wind number or direction but you know as i as i'm getting to the left i'm going towards a more side wind what's happening is the wind aim effect you see how it's moving my blue arc is moving more and it's affecting more with regards to right and left but it's also increasing its carry. Watch it. It's increasing its carry back to normal right here, 178 at a straight side wind. But look what happens when I move across the angles of a cross headwind. See how we decrease by a yard or two, three, four, and it keeps decreasing. And also the, the aim effect decreases as well. The blue arc is getting less. And then we get back to our cross wind value 164 that's a straight crosswind so basically you just know in general if you're in if you're in the different angles of a cross headwind you need to compensate whether it's a headwind or tailwind if it's in between a straight sidewind and a cross headwind you use a less multiplier if it's the other way watch what happens when i go the other way 65 64 into the cross the cross range region i would give it crosswind 166, 165, 164 is that crosswind typical range. But as we move to the straight headwind, it's gonna affect it more. And you can check this for each and every club. This is a great way to practice and learn the wind. I can change clubs, I can change shot types and see this pitch shot, the headwind is affect or this headwind at cross headwind at different angles is affecting it different along the different positions, right? The different angles. I'd like to demonstrate that to you all because I received a lot of questions on that last year. Like, what is, what do you mean? And that is what I mean by that. And that's why I showed it to y'all. But now we're gonna actually get out onto the course and we're gonna do some examples for you in this video. All right, so here we go. We're at six pennies layer hole number one. And I wanted to show you an extreme example of the wind in this video. 
So keep in mind, I have videos on elevation changes, on lie ranges. So you do have to take everything you've learned on the channel into account along with the wind in your calculations. So as we take a look at this specific golf shot, I right now for demonstration purposes have difficulty turned down to beginner swing timing off distance control meter on because all I care about is showing you all the wind's effect and how I approach the wind on an actual golf course. So as we take a look at this golf shot, it's a 16 miles an hour, basically straight headwind. So the typical headwind multiplier that I gave you to use 1.25. Remember what I said when you get to the higher wind categories, uh, even I, above 18 as a general rule, but even when you get to the 16 miles per hour when it's a downhill shot, because downhill shots, we have a 12 inch downhill, elevation changes are gonna have a greater effect on, uh, the wind's gonna have a greater effect because the ball's gonna be in the air a little bit longer. So as I take a look up at this shot, the first thing that I do, I'm taking a look at a landing zone, right? Let's take a look how, where I wanna land this golf ball. We have an upslope here. Honestly, 178 is not a bad landing spot. A headwind or cross headwind is gonna increase your backspin, which is gonna decrease your roll as well. So you have to keep that into account when you're hitting into a green. So I'm actually, for calculations, I'm gonna pick a landing spot of 181 it's downhill 12 feet so i'm going to take 12 divided by three it's going to give me four so to land at 181 with regards to the elevation i need to take off four yards because it's going to fly four yards further just like i talked about in my elevation video divide the number by three that's how many yards it's going to affect so 81 80 79 78 if I had the aim marker turned off or the marker only like TGC Tours, you would have to go by grids, right? So we're at 78, that's where I wanna land it based on elevation. But what about the wind? We have our multiplier 1.25, if you remember that, you're gonna be close. We have an iron out, so 1.25 modifier. So if I take 15 times 1.25, that gives me 18.75. So I need to add 18.75 yards to my golf shot by either clubbing up or, you know, whatever you want to do. So 18.5 added to 178. That's my initial calculation. I usually take the easy route. I use 1.25 for almost everything and then I do the fill test after. So 196 is where we need to aim, around. So we're going to go to around 196. And... This is a example. Do you see how the wind is not a straight headwind? There's a little bit of right to left movement, but it's been shifting back and forth. If you all have been watching as I'm talking, that's why the eye test is so important. So it's technically a cross headwind, like a little bit. So I need to compensate. The multiplier for aim that I said was 1.0 for cross headwind. This is not a true cross headwind. It is barely. So I'm gonna take that and decrease it by like 60%. So I'm gonna take basically five, five yards. I'm gonna aim five yards or five grids to the right. So one, two, three, four, five. Gonna correct because it's in meters, the grid. So I'm gonna take a little bit off. And then we're gonna do the eye test. If we do the eye test here, it's a headwind. What did I say earlier about headwinds? They affect more. In general, that's the average across all the wind speeds. High winds, more like 1.5. So I'm going to go ahead and correct and go up to a 198 or hybrid and actually add to about 200. 200 to 201 is where I'm going to carry. The wind changed, so it's 15 miles per hour. So we're going to go to 200 aiming spot. We want to land around 178 was the landing zone. So we go back. We want to land around 178. Between 178 and 181 is my landing zone. We're going to go back here. 200. 201. Do the eye test. Okay, wind is still blowing into a cross. It's going gonna, it's gonna to pull it to the left a little bit. It's going to take off distance. As long as I hit the perfect power, this is going to be the wind's effect. So let's let's try it out. C 
see the exact Come carry. On, 180. So there you have it. So a just doing the 1.25 and then doing a few calculations and adjusting by fill, we dialed in that distance. But it's important to note, it's all based on your shot you hit, your tempo. You could do all the calculations you want. You gotta get the tempo down. I said I was gonna talk about shot shaping, elevation and everything, bonus tips here at the end. So when you're playing and you're adding shot shaping, I don't add a lot of shot shaping. I, it's just not the way I play, right? I barely add any shot shaping to my shot. But in as a general rule, if you add loft, so if I, if I switch to a lob wedge and I use LB to pull up shot shaping, if I move my left stick down to increase loft, right stick down to increase loft, your ball is going to fly higher. You're, the wind is going to have a greater effect. So if it's a headwind, it's going to affect it more. The multiplier is going to be higher. If it's a tailwind, it's going to affect it more. The multiplier is going to be higher. It's going to add more to the shot. Same thing for side wind calculations and cross headwind for aiming. If you add shot shaping, it's in the air longer, the wind's going to affect it more. That's the same concept if you're shooting to a green that's downhill, which was this specific example we just did. So if I declare this shot unplayable and we go back to the starting shot, let's declare unplayable and we'll go back to the tee. This, this is a downhill shot. The ball is going to be in the air longer. The wind's going to affect it more. Thus, the wind's going to have a greater effect on the ball. And you need to compensate for that. There's so many different things you have to compensate for. If it's an uphill, uphill elevated shot, especially extreme examples, like uphill 45 feet or more, the ball is going to fly lower. It, the, it's going to be in the air l shorter and the wind is going to affect it less. So you would want to decrease your wind aim and distance multiplier. So same thing if you de-loft. So I talked about shot shape with regards to loft and spin. When you de-loft, you're gonna the flight's gonna be lower, similar to hitting up up a hill, and the wind's gonna affect it less. So you need to think about a lot. Once you play this game more, you are going to get so much. It's gonna become automatic, right? It, this game. Once you play it, I go through these numbers really quick and quickly in my brain now. Uh, I do rely on the numbers heavily in the beginning and then I transition, but I'm going by a lot of fill this year. So now as far as spin, I talked about this earlier, but if this if you're into a headwind, it's going to add backspin to the shot. So your ball is going to have decreased row and it's a lot of times going to spin backwards, especially with high irons and wedges. If you have tells tailwind it's going to add front spin to it and it's going to increase the roll and bounce so you need to compensate for that when you're picking your landing zone i know this is a lot to keep track of when you hit a fast or hit a slow it changes it as well when you hit a fast into a headwind it decreases the wind's effect so your ball travels further if you hit a slow into a headwind it kills the ball if you hit a fast into a tailwind, the ball gets sent. If you hit a fast into a straight sidewind or even cross head cross sidewind, it's if you hit a fast into a left blowing wind, it's going to take off to the left right away. It's going to send. Same thing if you're if you slow it to the right on a sidewind that's blowing from left to right, so everything's pushing the ball to the right. If you hit a slow off the shot, it's going to send it. It's going to increase the effect. So tempo is really key. You can't hit a perfect tempo every time, right? You're not going to. But the closer you can get to that perfect spot and having these calculations, although they're not going to be perfect, they're going to get you closer and know how to calculate the win. For when you hit that perfect shot, you're going to be so much closer. But I, in closing thoughts... The reason I was the reason I was so close in that hybrid shot was not because the mul the multiplier helped me, right? It got me really close. But I compensate. Do not forget to adjust each and every round based on how you're playing the headwinds. If you're playing and you're underestimating the wind effect on every single shot during a round, compensate during that round and learn, adapt as you go. 
Don't rely so heavily on the numbers. Use your brain, use your fill. Use a calculator, of course. Save your brain. Use your brain power for the golf and hitting the right tempo. Use this beautiful thing for all your calculations. Who would ever not use this, right? <laughs> but that's, that's the nerd in me using a calculator, the golf nerd. But to me, keep working at it. Don't forget the power of the eye test. And I hope you all found this helpful. I know it was a whole lot of information to go over, but I loved making this video. I loved going through all the wind information for you all. You all are all legends. I appreciate each and every one of you all for all the support. If you got some enjoyment, drop a like. If you have any questions, let me know down below. But you can take screenshots of these. You can take screenshots to play as you go if you're on your phone. You can just keep them on your phone. I do plan to post these on my website sometime. So you will see them up there sometime in the future. But for now, write them down, take screenshots until I get them up on the website. You all are all legends. I greatly appreciate all the support. I couldn't do any of this without you all. And I love helping you all learn video games, especially PGA 2K23. Appreciate you all. I will see you in the next one. As always, have a fantastic day, everybody.